Hey everyone, and welcome to this tutorial about piston feed tapes. Piston feed tapes are extremely useful, and I've used them a lot in the past, for example, in this cocoa bean farm, which works based off a of piston feed tape that pushes off all of the cocoa beans. And I also used them in my recent airship resting house, which you can find a link to on the screen and in the description, where I used it for the actually turnable rotors that you can see in the front right now turning, and also a bigger one on the back right here which are pretty cool, so let's get started with the tutorial. Let's start off by explaining what piston feed tapes actually are, or piston tapes. What you can observe right here is the glass blocks, or all of the blocks, go around in a rectangle. You can have this going clockwise and counterclockwise depending on how you lay out the pistons. So this can be used in a variety of ways, as you could see. There are also another use for them, more deeply rooted into redstone, which I will explain later, but let's maybe turn off the clock and observe what actually happens when I press a button and just have one pulse. So every pulse, the glass block moves one spot. You can see this every time I press the button, the glass block moves. And it's pretty simple to build as well. The piston tape can basically be any size that you want, as long as it's a rectangle and does not exceed 12 blocks, since 12 blocks is how far the pistons can push. It's also important that you leave out the opposing corners. So leave out a block right here and here to be air, or you can also have it on the other corners right here and here. Since the entire thing will be moving, the corners will change every second move anyway, so it really doesn't matter where you leave out the corners. Also very important is the timing. It's only really important that you power the opposing pistons at the same time. So this piston that controls that corner has to be at the same time as this piston that corner. And so do these two have to correlate. So in my example, I used four tick repeater and another one right here. So five ticks on the up piston and on the lower piston down here. They're on the yellow line and zero ticks on the other two pistons. And then I just use a quick pulse mechanism right here with a dropper and a hopper. Doesn't have to be a one tick pulse. And since I'm using repeater, one tick pulse wouldn't even work really. If you don't know what a one tick pulse is, just use this contraption right here with a comparator out of the hopper into a repeater and everything should work fine. Every time you press the button now, you can see that the entire thing turns. Let me maybe replace a block for a yellow terracotta. And you can see that the yellow terracotta moves around now. And that's pretty much it for the redstone. It's really quite simple if you know what you're doing. It's only essential that these two pistons are powered at the same time and these two are powered at the same time and that these are on a delay and have the same delay as well. And you should also use a quick pulse mechanism right here. Other than that, you can also have it hooked up to a clock like I had in the beginning. And maybe now we'll show you some practical applications, like my rotor, a little bit closer. We're now back on the redstone airship, and here's basically what the entire redstone construction looked like if you watched that video. If you didn't, totally should do that. <laughs> and basically, the lever here toggles the rotors. And a lot of noise happens, quite a lot of noise, but it works. You can see it works totally. And what it basically toggles is just a timer that goes into a monostable circuit right here that gives a short pulse. So let's toggle this off because of the noise and the short pulse then basically just goes into a two tick delay right here and a two tick delay right here. That would be this piston down here and the piston up here. So again, the opposing pistons are activated at the same time. In between, I have fence gates right here and here and you can see there are empty spots again uh, let's maybe take a color block so you can see a little bit better. Magenta wool, very colored. These are empty spots and the other ones are filled with blocks and I'm using solid blocks in a rotor shape right here and fence gates there since they are pretty much invisible but you need a block right there. And then I'm able to use two ticks to lay here since it's on a timer and then you can experiment with lowering the delay a little bit it can work, but sometimes it doesn't, so you might have to increase the delay on your bolts. And the back one basically works exactly the same way. Only the redstone is a little bit longer stretched, obviously, since I have to reach pistons that are farther away. But you can see the delay is the same. Two ticks here, two ticks here, zero ticks up here, and zero ticks down there. 
and it's on the same clock again the monostable circuit with the sticky piston this time and i'm just toggling it with a lever that is on a clock right there and that's basically it now to illustrate what a piston feed tape is is also pretty simple from here on out it's basically something to store memory that might sound pretty complicated but I now changed out some of the blocks for glass. So every second block is glass now. And we have a redstone block right whoops, right down here that has a redstone dust on top of it and a redstone lamp right in front. So if I toggle the entire thing once, you can see that the glass box that was there before is now toggled for an iron block and the redstone lamp turns on. Every time I toggle this, you can see it turns off, it turns on. Very simple. Now I can also say that I want to press it two times, so two glass blocks, and it will stay off, so it will stay off right now, and right now, but then if I press it a third time, it will turn on. And again, if I press it another time right now, it will stay on since that's a solid block, and then it will get uh, turned off. You can basically use this for a combination lock, for example, or other things, Usually it's not done with glass anymore or transparent blocks. It's now done with cauldrons, which looks a little like this. Hopefully a very great transition you saw right there. Probably not. It's also very simple. You just use the fact that cauldrons can be filled and you don't have to put a redstone block be uh, behind your blocks right here. So you can have this a little bit more compact if you want to. And you can still have the same effect with the glass. Now just with cauldrons and comparators. The cauldrons also have the advantage that you can fill them multiple times. For example, this one would give a different signal th strength than the others. So this is two. And if I now press the button again, that might be an empty one, yes, but if there's one inside there, you can see it's only one. Two, it's two, and with three balls inside there, it's obviously three. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the piston feed tape. I hope you enjoyed, and if you want to check out that Redstone airship that I've been teasering like two times already, you can do that now, and that by the right side of the screen, there should be the airship, and below that, the tutorial playlist. Hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, subscribe to the left, I believe. I'm very bad with sides. But that's been it for the video, and see you next time.